Hello and welcome back to the What We Said podcast. Um, happy Friday, everybody. It's the weekend. It's fall. It's a good time. I hope you're having a great time. I'm not, but I hope Chelsea you are. Chelsea is, um, if you're watching on YouTube... I'm not hungover. She she looks as though she would be like <laughs> hungover struggling or something. I know. But this honestly, the sunglasses, that looks nice. We have some bright yeah. lights in here. They are so bright. I didn't want to yeah. get, I had a migraine yesterday. We were driving a lot and I'll get to that experience in a little bit, but um, we were driving a lot and I got such a bad tension, headache or migraine. I don't know if it was because I didn't have as much caffeine as I usually do. Uh, Nick was saying every time you come back from LA, you complain about like, something like yeah. a headache or something stomach. yeah like something like feeling sick and uh, what's this like sinus mm. wise mm -hmm. and maybe it's the pollution there because it is very polluted there mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just not i'm not doing too hot right now she's i not, will probably not feeling 100 yeah i'm feeling 103 no i'm just kidding Eesh. i don't have a fever but i just was i just was sick a while ago and i just feel like my i'm staying away well we're literally two feet apart <laughs> I'm like, we're six feet. We edit it. Um, we're just on opposite sides of the room in the edit. I mean, we were I was just closer with you. yesterday. So. We didn't like share drinks or anything, though. I'm hoping Nick that you're not sick. contagious. Yeah, Nick isn't sick. My boys haven't gotten sick. I have been continuously getting the same, kind of the same symptoms, um, but it just kind of like goes away and gets better, and then it'll kind of come back. So I don't know what it is. Don't send me any scary diagnoses. Okay, I'm going to the doctor soon, but... Yeah, that's, that's annoying. Like this, yeah. It's really annoying to not feel yeah. well and just, to have like little flu like symptoms is I really. Know. And yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm breastfeeding. So my immune, there's just like when you're sick and it's very not basic symptoms, but like flu like symptoms or like cold symptoms mm -hmm. or it's like fatigue, weakness. Yeah. Or like it's so hard to first of all tell, like, am I weak? I don't know. Like, would I really notice if I had weakness? Mm -hmm. It's hard to know what's going yeah. on. So. Well, nice. I hope you can be distracted and that Hopefully. yapping will help you feel a little bit better. Same. I, I hope it heals my heart. <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, we had a long day yesterday. It was our, it was my personally my first time taking Benny mm -hmm. out for the day alone. I mean, I, I wasn't alone because I was with you, I guess. But, you know, without Leif, without mm -hmm. someone, an extra hand, because you have your own baby. Yeah. So it's not the like- The normal, yeah. 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 Um, and it went really well. I was really pleasantly surprised. I definitely overpacked. I was telling Chelsea, I don't like I'm in the, you know, first parent. This is my first time doing this. So I'm like, well, what if this happened? What if this happened? I'm packing for every scenario. So I packed the diaper bag full. I used pretty much nothing that I brought aside from like a diaper and a wipe. So, yeah. Um, but it's good to be prepared. We you were gone know. like the whole day. We went to LA, we had a work lunch, we did mm -hmm. a little play date with some friends. It yeah. was super fun. It was so fun. It was so nice to get all the babies together. Mm -hmm. It actually felt pretty nice. Like it's been really hot here. Mm -hmm. Not fall like at all. No, um, we're trying to make fall happen, but it's not happening yeah, yet. Yeah. Not quite. Well, um, both of us are literally dressed cozy as can be, but it's, we shouldn't be. No, hot. I will be drenched. Um, and we we drove in Chelsea's new car, car everybody. Woo! I wish I had more energy to be excited about it because I truly am so beyond excited and in love with it. Okay, if you guys don't know the lore of the car and why this may be a bigger deal than, you know, anybody else's new car or some of my previous new cars. The car that I had before this new car was my Dusty, trusty Subaru Outback 2015, okay? That thing has been through the freaking ringer with me. I we have do not been, say that lightly. No, it's been through the <laughs> ringer. I have had this car. I got it new used, but I got it like a year or two after, you know, it came out. So um, I pretty much had it its whole life. And I loved it. I really love that car. I still love Subaru Outbacks. I think they're great family cars. I think they're great. I got it because we were in Utah. So I got it because of the snow. Mm -hmm. Lots of people in Utah have Subaru Outback um, or just Subarus in general. I think it's a great car. Um, but first week I got it, I think it was the first week I'm backing out of my parking spot in like the parking lot at our, our apartment building. And I back up in my front rear bumper gets obliterated by a pillar that I didn't realize was there or sorry front bumper like or front oh. um 
the front of my tire, but like okay. the car, the, yeah, yeah. the paint. The Wait, in Utah? This is in Utah? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we had just brand spanking new. Yeah. I was devastated. I felt so stupid. It was so expensive to fix. So we've never fixed it. It's just kind of a little beat up mark on my car. Shows people stay away if you see me driving. Like, okay. And then a couple years later, I'm pregnant. Okay, picture this. I'm nine months pregnant. I just bought a brand new car seat. So exciting when you put in the car seat. (laughs) Leaveable, this story. I put the car seat in the car. I'm so excited. You know when you get your car seat, it's just like, this is happening. Yeah. So we get so excited, brand new car seat. We put it in the car. We're, um, it's Christmas time. So we go, actually with you guys, we go get a Christmas tree. It's the best day. We're feeling so happy. I'm decorating the Christmas tree, yada, yada, yada. We take a picture in front of the car with the Christmas tree it's just, I never take pictures in front of my car, but it was like, oh, Christmas tree moment. Your I'm soul knew. Yeah. The next morning I go to get my prenatal massage, the last one, mind you, because I'm feeling miserable. I'm nine months pregnant and I am weeks away at this point. I didn't know, but I could have given birth that day. I could have yeah. given birth, you know, anytime at that point. I walk out and I'm like, where's my car? It's not in its parking spot. We have assigned parking spots at this apartment that we lived at. And I'm like, wait where's my car? Like every other car's here. Where's my car? Like, so they weren't doing sweet. They weren't doing cleaning. Like every other car is here. Where is my car? And it's in a parking lot where it's like, so random. Uh, you're allowed to park there. Yes. It's not, you know, you weren't parked somewhere. You shouldn't no, it's have or something spot. like that where it would get towed for any reason. Yeah. It's, it's literally your my spot. spot. I'm like, Nick, where is our car? He's like, Oh, I don't know. I'm like, did you take it? Like, did you leave it on the other side of the building? Cause we had unloaded our Christmas tree. We like, go look over there. We're like, no, where's our car? We're running up and down the street at this point. I'm like, where's our car? Did it get towed? I'm calling tow companies like around just like maybe we left the car somewhere. We didn't remember. Cause we were going crazy. Where's our car. And about an hour into the search, we were like, it's got, it got stolen. It had to have gotten stolen. Like maybe when we were getting the Christmas tree, like we left a door open or something it probably got stolen. So we call the cops. They come to our house. We file a police report. I am shook beyond belief. Also at this time, that was our only car. Such a massive thing to like, (laughs) to go missing as well. It's not just like, oh, where's my purse? Yeah. Where is my vehicle? Where is our only vehicle that we have to drive? With a brand new car seat If I go into labor, we have to Uber to the, the hospital or get a ride from someone. Like, and we have no car seat. No, beyond. So we're so confused. The policeman is so calm when he's talking to us. I am feeling sad because I feel sentimental about this car. I'm like, I feel so violated. I miss this car. And he's like, don't worry. We, ca- we, get, these all- we get these back all the time. I'm like, you're joking. How? We have no tracking. My stomach is going crazy. We have no tracking on it. We have no security. Like that's maybe why, because it's like an older car. Yeah, it didn't have, didn't have like cameras or no, whatever. Like no, like nothing about push it. Push to start. You have to have the like a mm-hmm. ignition or the key to the ignition, whatever. Is it easier to steal a car that you have to have a key for I, or that you push to start? I think it's easier to steal that. an actual key. Yeah, because that I think sense. you can make like there are. You can like wire it. Like yeah, put a wire in apparently there or they have different like templates where it's like they can find your VIN number. So I don't want to give people hints like how to steal a car, but there's ways that you can like re- replicate the key. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Cause it's like, okay, so say we leave our car unlocked. So what do you mean? How they, are you still getting the car out? How are you driving the car? With no key. Yeah. So to this day, do you know how they did it? Like I, they were watching your specific car and they're like, okay, we're going to replicate the key for this car. I have no they wanted clue. The Subaru? I don't know if they had, that's what I'm saying. Like we were next to a bunch of, but nicer, newer, and maybe those are harder to steal because of security things like mm-hmm. alarms. Like mm-hmm. ours was just a little too old. Um, but they, the car didn't get, what is that called when you wire it? Like hot wired because it wasn't, well, okay. Let me get back to the story. So he, he's very confident that he's going to find this. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, I trust him. Mm-hmm. The day goes on. I have my ups and downs. I'm like, first of all, we're screwed. Always get comprehensive car insurance, everybody. Okay. Cause you think it's not going to be you. And then when it is you, we would have been screwed. We would have had to buy a complete car and we would have had got nothing because we just had, had like money. bare minimum. Hmm? Or I'm sorry, but you had... <laughs> like, I did have some money. No, sorry, but you had the comprehensive card? We did not. Oh, you did not. So we would have been screwed. But what do you mean you would have been screwed if you didn't have it? Oh, if you didn't get the car. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Running, sorry. I, yeah, literally trying to spoil <laughs> it. I'm like, let's wait. No. So anyways, we're I'm freaking out because we are about to have a baby. We're going to have to buy a freaking new car um, and we get no money for it. So we're just out the car. 
and this card's paid off. Like it's so annoying. So I get a call the next morning when I'm in the shower and they leave a voicemail. I check the voicemail. It's like, Hey, this is the sheriff's department. We found your car. Like you can come. I am in disbelief. I'm like, you're joking. You found my car. How? It was like two towns away. Never even heard of it. Never been there. They found a guy living in it. He had taken all of my belongings out of the glove compartment, out of the middle console, out of the like sunglasses thing. He take our car seat gone, completely gone. And there was a bunch of paraphernalia in the back. There was like a cigarette in the front. There was literal Halloween costumes or something in the back, a big thing, a tutu, like girls outfits. I'm like, what is happening? Sparkly tops, like fedora hats, fedora hat. Like what? It was the creepiest thing. What happened in this? What happened in this car? This car. And we got a hint. Yeah, and we got a hint because I was like, something very nefarious has happened in this car. And one thing they left, my Stanley water bottle. Shout out Stanley. You never sent me a new one. Thanks a lot. But I felt like I deserved this. But all that's left is a Stanley cup. (laughs) All that's left is a Stanley cup, okay? Mind you, at this time, they were at the height of their popularity. Like hard to get. Colors were dropping and Mm -hmm. you were racing. Mm -hmm. You were buying multiple. People were selling on the black market. Mm -hmm. Like I loved my Stanley. So I have a bad feeling about it. I'm like, Nick, we got to throw that away. Like, Oh, immediately. Yeah. Like, We're not. Sorry. Go throw it in the dump. So Nick picks it up and he first, I don't know what came over him, but he opens the lid and there is a white substance in there. From a man. From particularly a man who was sleep, probably sleeping in my car. I have never like Nick started instantly gagging he's like this has got to go he throws in the trash I mean we could have used it for DNA but like they already caught the guy that was in the car yeah so whatever I was like I'm not dealing with this disgusting sticky in there absolutely obliterated my Stanley cup disrespected it and then I move on with my life we go get it detailed I have my car back hallelujah we get comprehensive car insurance all the bells and whistles I need to buy a new car seat we had to buy a brand new car seat which those things are those expensive. Are cheap, yeah. Those are like one of the most expensive things you have yeah. to buy when you have a baby. So that was insane. Um, and yeah, the other things have happened to this car. Like it broke down a week later in a very scary neighborhood when I was by myself. I was like, I'm freaking over this car. Like it's got bad juju. But then part of me was like, but it got broken into again too, didn't it? Yes. It yeah. It stole your purse. Stole my your purse and my wedding ring is in the, it was a cursed car. It was cursed. Yeah. Cursed we car. needed new energy. New energy for years. I've been wanting a new car. And I'm just like, uh, but I love it. Like, am I going to give up on it? Like, she's the victim. Not, you know, she she didn't do this on purpose. But someone put a bad curse on her. Anyways, I got rid of her. <laughs> anyway, she's gone. <laughs> she's gone. I got a brand new Volvo XC90. Thank you to everyone. I was asking. I've been thinking, like, what is a good mom car? I want something really safe. That's, like, my top priority. I want something really safe. I was asking, like, do you guys like them? Um, and everyone was saying, best car ever like they've had it for 20 years like my mom always gets this car I'm like a Volvo um engineer or mechanic Mm. like these cars are great and they convinced me and um so we went to the dealership got a brand new car and it has been I was telling JC I think people are looking at me I think people are treating me different in this car I'm not you think I'm joking some some guy was driving in his um car and I don't know if I knew him or something but he was literally beaming at me, <laughs> beaming at me and made it a go like to go like this, almost like laughing. I'm like, I look amazing <laughs> in this car. <laughs> we were joking when we we're in LA, like, can we pass? Sorry. Like, you know, when you're like, oh shoot, can I get over? And you're like asking yeah. and people are just like, of like, course. Please, you look car, amazing. You look incredible. You yeah. can pass me anytime. You can do anything. Well, you deserve this upgrade. Thank you. It is so and now I'm the one seething with jealousy because when yeah. I was in that car, I'm like, oh, wow, this is so nice. Yeah. The car play, like the screen and just the nice interior. The technology, like what have I been missing? It fixes, I the main reason I wanted to get it was safety, obviously, but also our car, the heat wave has really proven to me there's not good ventilation in that car. Mm. And with babies who are backwards facing and who knows, like if I'm going to have more babies, I'm going to have babies for a while, yeah. you know, it's like years. So there's we no get, like so I'm trying to put a fan. The fan dies. It's so bad. Um, and so this car had everything and everything more. more because there's little things I didn't even realize I was missing out on. Like, oh, this was an actual issue that I was dealing with every time I drove mm-hmm. my car. I didn't even like think it was an annoyance until I got better. Until I upgraded. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, I loved being in there. 
It was just fun. a good vibe. I told Chelsea, and now I am feeling like I want a new car. Yeah, Our yeah. cars are very simple. Mine's a 2016. Yeah. And it was, I, it was the year before, it was made the year before CarPlay and like yeah. before some major upgrades, I feel like a lot of cars have. Um, yeah, mine was the year before that. So I don't have any of the like, the maps on Bells it. It's just, yeah. yeah. And it's so much safer the, to have the like- The day you got your new car, we had to take our Jeep to the shop for like oh the millionth no. time. And I was like, oh wow, okay. And then okay. when I drove, drove in your car, I was like, oh, this is so nice. I know. We've been kind of just like, un, like- you thinking bought we're a new just house, gonna yeah. well no yeah. no no we just have been thinking for a while like let's just run this thing to the ground like yeah has a ton of miles on it we're not like let's just yeah no use payment. it until like yeah. we can't and I fear Leif's like I fear we're getting to the point where it's like to the ground we can't because yeah. it, we have to take it in constantly and there's like always yeah. an issue but we'll see we'll see the yeah. yeah it's so it's, it's so nice time. happy for you guys that's how I felt too like this car was literally ran to the ground it had like cut up leather seats like things were just dinged in it it was it was, quite, it was time yeah it was it was time oh don't worry so when I um we go to the dealership and of course we're like maybe we'll let's just go test drive one I've really been wanting one I haven't even seen it inside we go and Nick's like okay we had brought the boys and he's like okay bring the boys home I'll stay here work it out um and then we can get the car and so the day went on and I had Abby come over to watch the boys and I was like, I'll Uber there so we can drive home together, like in the car um, for the first ride or whatever. Mm -hmm. I get in the Uber, <laughs> I get in this Uber and he's like, okay, this location, like the dealership in this town. And I was like, yeah, it's like a town, yeah. like two towns over or something. I don't know. It was kind of far. And he's like, okay, you're going to this town. I'm like, yeah. And then we're kind of driving for a sec. He slows the car down on my road and goes, do you carry a gun? Huh? And looks at me, the car is slowing down. I'm like, I'm frozen. I'm frozen. frozen I'm like, in fear. do I lie and say yes? Like, is he about to like ask me if like uh, assault me? Like what is happening? I go, I'm literally frozen. I say no, which I'm so dumb. Like I should well, What been. are you going to say? Yes. Yeah. And I then have he a kicks me out. In my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, what is, so I'm like, no. And I think he could tell how like freaked out I was by that question. Cause I was like, no. And he was like, oh, cause you're going to this town like basically saying like that's a town is dangerous scary. yeah it's like, a dangerous town sir and he's like it was just a joke I was just making a joke <sighs> that's not funny sir that is not a funny joke do, looks me dead in the eyes do you have a do you carry a gun I'm terrified because it's like what was coming next like because you're gonna need one like yeah I'm <laughs> yeah. so scared that's my, fir my first thought was because you're gonna need it like I got you in my car we're on our way <gasps> do you have a gun because I'm about to I lit Oh, my heart I've, dropped I've into chills. my feet. I have chills. I have chills. Yeah. Then he was so nice. The thing is, men don't understand how scary it is to be yeah. a woman. They mm -hmm. don't have the the context of like, when you say something like that, I am genuinely Panic. scared you're going to do something so scary to yeah. me. Whereas men just don't. If 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 no. that Nick was in the car and he asked that, he would have been like, no, why? Yeah. And it wouldn't have probably occurred to him like, no. that this is a really that scary- I need one. Yeah. I know. It's so Ugh, crazy. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Wow. So. That is- was the last Ugh. little punch before I got in my brand new car, new energy. New energy. Yeah. New energy only. We got rid of the rug. We got rid of the car. We got rid of the car and we're moving on. Wow. I love that. It was like really a pinch me moment. I really like to be serious. I'm so grateful. Like it was so, it was like a moment of like, oh my gosh, all this hard work. And I have kind of said the same thing about this car. Like I don't need a fancy car. Like I've got this car. I don't have any payments on it, whatever. Mm. And when we were talking about it, we're like, this is the best decision we've worked so hard. Like, let's, you know, yeah. get this car. And yeah, I was just like looking at even the, the babies back there yesterday. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is our life. I know, I know. And JC texted me that she's like, my first bath. We're like, we made it. Oh, my first All bath in the bathtub. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. So out of context. I'm like, yeah. she took I, I took a first bath. I had never car. baked. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so, it's so nice. We're just like I, settling down. Yeah. We just talked about Toxic, whole, oh my gosh, I can't. Toxic sorry, hustle culture. Brain. Yeah, last week. I'm like, yeah. we're settling, we're slowing everything. Yeah, I'm like, soft girl era now. Everyone's like, sorry. <laughs> last, last year you said, or last week you said you're gonna be on your grind. Yeah. Speaking of last week. Mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> I got a DM that was like, like there are 24 hours in a day. And I was like, okay. That's all they said? Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I go to the YouTube video of our- oh, um, no. 
our last week's episode and the top, co- like all the comments are like, when you said there were 12 hours in a day, like I lost my mind. And I'm like, but what happened? So I'm watching back the first few minutes of our podcast, Chelsea. You're talking about how like, oh, September's like 9 yeah. p.m. of the whatever or yeah. something. I don't remember what the thing is that you were saying, mm-hmm. but you were like, there's 12 hours in a Stop. day. There's 12 <laughs> months in a year. And I was like, oh my gosh, so true. You guys know what I meant. But the blind leading the no, blind. I'm Me screaming. completely agreeing with you. Not catching it at all. There's 24. You're like, there's no. 12 hours in a day. There's 12. Like, that, I've never put like, that together. So true. I'm like, Chelsea, that is genius. Wow. I'm going Why? so much. I am supporting you with my ch- whole chest. I'm screaming. And you know what's funny is the way I calculated was with 24 hours because I, I did two hours for every 12. month. Yeah. Because or for every one. Yeah. Yeah. For which, every month I did two hours. So I knew that, but I didn't, you know, say it. You didn't articulate it. I'm not that dumb. No, that was hilarious. That's hilarious. hilarious wow. I was laughing out loud. No I'm one like, to catch us. No. Wow. And us just completely like. Going on with it. Yeah. Going on. I can't believe no one's ever realized there's 12 hours. <laughs> one of the comments was actually really funny. It was like. I'm screaming. Like I learned today there's 12 hours in a day, like mind blown. Something I was laughing oh, anyway. Oh no. Hilarious. I didn't even um, see that. <laughs> I know, I know I've been hating on fall, but I actually am really excited for fall fashion. It is one of my favorite times of year. I love the tones of like, you know, denim, having maybe a brown leather bag. I have been eyeing this brown leather tote for, this is going on year two that I've been eyeing it. So I think I just need to pull the trigger. It's from Quince and we have a code. So I actually really think I need to get it for this fall season because it's just like a big spacious tote bag. And it's this gorgeous brown leather color. And it's so much more affordable than other ones that I've seen. Quince offers timeless and high quality items, ensuring that your wardrobe stays fresh and that you don't blow your budget. They, all their stuff just looks and feels so high quality. I have a few silk skirts that I feel like I'll just have forever from Quince. They're really, really nice. You can wash them. The fabric is just beautiful and the colors are great too. They also have cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. The best part is that Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. I actually slept in my Quince PJs last night. They're like shorts and a short sleeve linen set. It's so cute. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes, which we absolutely love. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash what we said for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash what we said to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash what we said. Go check it out. Thank you to Dreamland Baby. They are one of our sponsors on today's episode. We absolutely love them. So you can go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code what we said at checkout to receive 20% off site-wide plus free shipping. This offer is for new and existing customers. There's one thing that Case loves, and it's his weighted sleep sack that he sleeps in. Um, He absolutely loves it. It's part of his nightly routine. He gets zipped up in it. It's so nice. I feel like it just gives him a little extra comfort at night. So the sleep sack has tagless design to avoid irritation. Case also hates tags. If there's something itching him, especially at night, that would be so annoying. They have the two-way zipper for easy diaper changes in the middle of the night. And they have the cover calm technology, which is evenly distributed weight. So it goes all over them. It's like it just mimics a like your hand on their chest or their back, whatever it is. And it's really nice for them. It can help them sleep deeper. It can have, you know, better sleep for you because when baby sleeps, the whole family sleeps. It also holds up well after washing. It's super soft. They also have really soft, comfy bamboo pajamas. I refuse to put Benny in anything other than like really soft pajamas at night. I just feel like it's so cozy and just comfy for her to sleep in. They're made of 100% soft and natural cotton. I definitely think this is worth trying out, especially if your baby has been having trouble waking up a lot. The founder, um, that's why she founded the company is because she was completely exhausted. Her six-month-old was still waking up every one and a half hours. And so she created this company. They made a deal on Shark Tank. They've been featured in Forbes. And they've helped lots of families get more sleep. So definitely go check it out. Go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code what we said at checkout to receive 20% off site-wide and free shipping. This offer is for new and existing customers. Go check it out. I want to talk about Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. We have to. We have to. We had a little watch party. Chelsea came over. We ordered pizza. We had Diet Cokes, of course. Of course. Pebble Ice. 
And it was such a great, it was such a great night. We watched a few episodes together Mm -hmm. and then we watched the rest on our own because we, you know. Very shortly after. Yeah. We binged quickly so that we could chat about it. It's so good. It's one of those shows that you're like, well, the episodes are there. Yeah. I, it's so I'm hard so to happy to sleep. they did that. Mm-hmm. I really Thank hate goodness. when they do it weekly. I actually hate it. I love being able to binge mm-hmm. and knowing that it's just all right there in front of me. Yeah. Um, I don't know where to begin with this because I have a lot of I thoughts. Know, there's so many thoughts. There's so much that happened. I, I don't know if it was as compelling. I'm sure it was, but we're having, we're watching this through the perspective of we grew up Mormon. We, this is the drama we hear about Mm -hmm. in our daily lives, Mm -hmm. like from our hometown, from friends. Like we also know so many people in Utah, Mm -hmm. not just, you know, the Arizona Mormons, but the Utah Mormons. Like it's so relatable to us. That makes it so fun to watch. and fun to watch. Yeah, and interesting. And we can just put ourselves in that position. So it's really fun. I don't know how other people feel who have never heard of Mormonism and like what the experience is, yeah. is, if it's as compelling. Well, I think it's, I think that this culture is so normal to us. Like mm-hmm. you said, we yeah. grew up, it's, it's essentially like seeing, watching the show to me, it was like seeing people that I know, my hometown, it's not my it's not my actual hometown, but this is what it feels like cuz I've spent a ton of time in Utah. Yeah. We lived there for a little bit. We're very familiar with like all these places that they're going. And to me it felt like I'm watching people that I kind of know in a culture I'm super familiar with, almost like in my hometown. Yeah. But it's filmed like the Kardashians. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like but I'm watching a reality TV show. And so it just is so yeah, so relatable like you said. And I will say, I don't know, I don't even know how to articulate this. And I wanted to have this conversation with you on the podcast um, so that we could like dissect maybe why. And we'll get into more of the actual show. Well, first of all, I think that a lot of people, I kind of found the show a little bit triggering. Like Mm. towards the end, I had this weird feeling where I was just like, what is, what am I feeling right now? I was trying to be self-reflective and I'm like, I'm feeling triggered. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain otherwise. Like I'm feeling almost this defensive feeling of like, I'm just triggered by this show and by Mm -hmm. seeing this culture, like so with a magnifying glass on it. Why am I feeling like that? I was texting my friend Haley and I was like, I actually feel she was asking my thoughts on it. And I was like telling her how I loved it. And like, I loved watching it, blah, 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 to giving her all these thoughts. And then I said at the end, I am feeling so triggered though. And I can't put my finger on why. And she replied that she was like, same. I I feel the same way. And she kind of told me her thoughts of why she thinks she feels triggered. I get a random text from Tyson um, yesterday. He was watching the show. I had not told him that. Like I hadn't told him that piece. I was like waiting. I was like, I want you to finish the show. And then I want to like deep dive with you. And the text just says, this show is so triggering. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just said that to Haley. Yeah. Like, um, so I'm clearly like, you know, Not I alone thought it was, it. I truly thought, well, I am projecting 100%, mm-hmm. but yeah. I was like, maybe I'm just, it's I have just my you. own issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's probably just me that's like feeling like this. And then when she validated it and Tyson validated it and then I had another friend who said the same thing. And I was yeah. like, okay, so we're all triggered. That's yeah. good to know. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm trying to, I'm still literally trying to figure out why. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of pieces to it. I think part of like uh, the reason, I don't know. I feel on one hand, I feel defensive over these girls. Mm -hmm. I ride for these girls, I will say. And I think that part of what makes me feel defensive of them and just like of the show in general is the fact that um, I've seen a lot of TikToks or just content from active Mormons who are really, really upset about this show. Mm-hmm. Like even before it came out, it was very much, these girls aren't even Mormon. Why are they portraying talking about Mormonism? Them. They're not portraying actual Mormons. Like this is so disrespectful. That's the vibe I was getting. And I've even seen a lot of content on my For You page and stuff of girls being like, this is the day in the life of an actual Mormon wife. Um, you know, a guy being like, um, when I prayed for an actual good Mormon wife, stuff like that, where yeah. I, it felt very, very, and I think that that in and of itself was triggering me mm-hmm. because that is the culture 
that I have always wanted to get so far away from is just that condescending, like you're not good enough. You're not good enough. Yeah. Very judgmental. If you're not following all of these rules, why are you even Mormon? Like it was just taking me back to when I was in the stage where I was like trying to yeah. stay in it because I wanted to because my whole family it's all I've ever known and I felt comfortable there and my yeah. whole family and all my friends were Mormon so I really wanted to be Mormon but I was having a very hard time following these stringent rules because they did not connect with me not just because I wanted to rebel but because like mm -hmm. I didn't feel good about them yeah and I didn't want to be uh I wanted more autonomy like I felt very stuck and and so I guess I just I feel for these girls who are like I can, that's, and that's my perception of them is that on this show, by the way, which everyone's like, oh, well, they're not actually Mormon. And I'm like, no, they, they, they are they were. like all of the girls on the show, even though they, a lot of them might not be following the exact rules of Mormonism. Um, some of them have served missions. A lot of them, I think have gotten married in the temple. They all grew up Mormon. Mm -hmm. They are Mormon. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. That's part of, I think, the triggeredness. For yeah, me, well, at even least. if they say they're not Mormon, you know, or they say, okay, they're Mormon, they're calling them bad Mormons, which is not nice to hear. If you are wanting to be part of something, but you're not a good, you're not good at it and you're not being good. Mm -hmm. So I think that also is hard to hear yeah. when you've felt like that before. Mm -hmm. When it's like, oh, I've felt like a bad Mormon. And then I see how people are actually thinking about bad Mormons, like actually judging me versus, yeah. you know, you could assume that, but if you don't hear it, you don't see people saying that. It's easy to be like, well, maybe they're not judging me. Right. And then this is yeah. kind of seeing it up close. I think it's just <clears throat> illuminating something that I think everyone on every side is kind of triggered by it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's kind of a good thing. Yeah. Because it's so bringing too. about conversations and mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I think active Mormons are triggered by the fact that this is not, they don't think it's a good representation of Mormonism yeah. because these and girls are not following the rules. And I think people who left the church or who don't like connect with Mormonism are also feeling this weird triggeredness because it's like, okay, I'm watching this culture that I'm, I'll never really rid myself of. That was, I think the other part Yeah, is like, even, I don't know. It's like, I'm saying sometimes you're in something and people will just be like, well then just don't be Mormon. Like just leave. If you don't want to follow the rules, like why are you still Mormon? And it's like, speaking from experience when I was in that stage again I think there are like stages to everything in different phases that you're in it's not that easy it's yeah. not easy to just be like oh okay let me you know I've done this for 25 years but let me just like rewire my brain not care about it not care about disappointing my family mm -hmm. like for context like we have had family members literally say to our face like I'm very disappointed in you like yeah I'm very disappointed that you're not active in the church like you know, things that it's mm -hmm. like, it's not so easy to just no. walk away or be like, oh, I don't really, this isn't really my thing anymore. I don't really want to follow these rules. Like there is so much pressure, different in every family, but if your whole family is Mormon, if you're born and raised, like it can be really hard to just, so I really commend these girls. I guess what I'm trying to say it for putting their themselves out for a lot of scrutiny mm -hmm. and being like, well, I kind of, you know, I like, I do like certain parts of the church, but there are a lot of things culturally that I don't like. And like, mm -hmm. I really commend them for, yeah. Wanting for to, they, they say multiple times in the show. I didn't know if they were Mormon or not mm -hmm. before the show. I didn't know if it was just like a clickbaity title. And, uh, cause you don't know from social media, even if they say no. like, no, you know, I don't know. And what they were saying. So I'm just going off what they were saying is that they are, and they're trying to change things in there, which is in a really, culture. yeah. In Mormon culture, which is really, hard to do mm -hmm. because it's a lot of burden you take upon yourself mm -hmm. to have to defend both sides sometimes right. where it's like I'm in and I want to you know I have to defend that but then I also have to defend that I don't agree with everything so mm -hmm. you're fighting everybody in exactly a way. Yeah. like you're in this middle ground where it's really impossible to yeah. win um because you're not really taking a firm stance either way you're like I want to be involved in this because I like these parts of it but I really appreciate that they are calling out certain things that yeah. You know, are not, that do make people want to leave, like point yeah. blank. I know. And looking from the outside in, it's like, this is, again, I don't know. I have a different perspective than other people, but I felt like if you're Mormon, you need to take this as good PR. Like I get before you're scared, 
But as I watched the show, there was part of me that was, you know, the the girls, because the girls were so likable. And I thought most of them, like, yeah. well, I mean, all of them <laughs> were likable. It's like, this is great. You're seeing that they're normal people with struggles, with ideas, mm-hmm. with, you know, they're very empowered in their relationships and they're, you know, and obviously there's still issues, but I thought it was like, you should, you know, again, I can't talk for people, but you should want to like lean into this a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. Like it's time for a rebrand. Right. And we should lean into the rebrand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's just, uh, I, I have so many thoughts and feelings about it because I, I don't even know like where to go from there. I also think I the just, trigger, going back to the triggering mm-hmm. thing, like I feel like it probably, yeah, like you said, was triggering for so many people for different reasons, mm-hmm. different like minute things. Mm-hmm. Like for me, it was um, certain uh, behaviors mm-hmm. that's triggering where it's like, oh my gosh, that is reminding me of something I experienced. Like even in certain places, if they showed places where I've lived it, yeah. and things that you know, weren't good happened there. That's triggering. Like Mm -hmm. there's so many different little things about it that if you have lived in Provo, if you know people in Provo, Mm -hmm. like if you have not a good experience there, it's very triggering. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think in some ways I still, I really try to just embrace the fact that I grew up Mormon and like there are things that I liked about my upbringing. There are things that I think obviously made me who I am that I appreciate about the church and stuff like that. And so I always try to just kind of embrace that and be like, okay, I grew up this way. There are certain things I liked and I can leave the rest of the things that I don't like behind. I don't have to, you know, harp on them or think about them all, Mm -hmm. all that much. Um, because there's, you know, I don't find that productive in a lot of ways. But I think watching this show, it kind of brought me back. Like, as we're talking, I'm realizing I'm not really involved in that culture anymore. I'm not around a ton of Mormon people who have that type of drama. And when I am, I feel very like, uh, I don't know how to explain other than uncomfortable. Like Mm -hmm. when I do go back to my hometown and it's like this Mormon gossipy world, I'm like, I feel so uncomfortable in this um, environment. Like Mm -hmm. this is why I left Mm -hmm. like this Literally, this is why I moved away. Mm -hmm. This is why, unbeknownst to me, like I just wanted a fresh vibe. And I'm like, then once I established my own life and my own beliefs and my own thoughts, I realize how far I've come from that environment Mm -hmm. and not in a like better or worse way. Just like I am in a different environment now. And whenever I go back to my hometown and I'm involved in that, and I think this watching this show kind of made me feel like I was in my Mm -hmm. hometown again for a second. Yeah, It makes me feel like, this weird feeling of almost resentment of how I grew up in a way, I Mm. think it is, is like, yes, I do appreciate a lot of things, but there are also a lot of things that I hate that I will always have with me Mm -hmm. in my brain. Like my brain is wired. It feels like I'll always be Mormon in a way. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes makes me feel like, I wish that that wasn't true. Do you know what I mean? I I agree 100%. I feel like I always say, I feel like Mormonism is like my heritage. It's really hard to just not associate it with that at at all because Mm -hmm. so many people I love and respect are Mormon. Even on the show, it's like you're watching, they're all Mormon. It's like I'm rooting for them. You know, you, it feels like it is like in my blood because it literally is. Because Mm for uh, speaking for us, like we have ancestors who have been Mormon for a really long time. You know, some of them founded Mormon town. So it's Mm -hmm. like, it feels like our heritage. So it doesn't feel like, oh, this is just something you know, they like to do. And now it doesn't feel that easy. It doesn't feel that light. No, so it's, it's, com- it can be confusing. I think for it's sure. Like, wait, wh- when people are like, are you Mormon? You're like, oh, that is a loaded yes. question. Like, yes. I, yeah, exactly. It feels like it will just forever be with you. And again, there are certain things that I, that I love about that, but there are a lot of things that I don't like. And I think yeah. anyone probably feels like that. Maybe if you grew up religious and you don't connect with it anymore or certain maybe things that trigger you. Yeah, yeah. Even if just culturally, like maybe there are certain things that you grew up with that you're just like, Oh, I wish that that wasn't a thing. And I think part of what I don't like that, uh, that I grew up with is this is, um, just this really, uh, judgmental type of nature, just, literally wired into my brain, not even trying to. And I'm not saying every Mormon is super judgmental. I think there's a lot who aren't it, it, but just by nature, when you're a part of a church that has very strict guidelines, you are literally taught to, to judge people based or based off of that. And not in a, 
I'm just saying like anyone you come across, you're judging them to some degree, right? You're like, oh, I like you. I don't like this about you. I like your outfit. I don't like you. That's just how anyone uh yeah, when you're in, yeah, building relationships. Or yes, friendships. like you have yeah. to make judgments, right? And, but I think when you grow up in a very high demand religion with a lot of rules, you're literally taught and your brain is wired to be like, you know, when I was young, I wanted friends who were Mormon. I was scared of people who weren't Mormon. Mm-hmm. I was scared to sometimes go to someone's house if, they're, if they weren't Mormon. Cause I'm like, well, are they gonna have alcohol there? Like, are they gonna drink coffee? That scared me because it was so unfamiliar to me. And I was taught mm-hmm. that it was really bad. So to me, I feel like from a young age, I'm just like already making these judgments, you know, from literally the time I'm five years old, I'm making harsh judgments of people's character based on external things. Mm -hmm. And that does not go away. And I think that I have tried so hard to, to distance myself from that. And as I get older, it's like the last thing I want to be is judgmental. I don't want to be a judgmental person, but sometimes I feel like it's hardwired into my actual blood and my brain to make judgments about people and what they're doing. Yeah. I I can see that. I feel like that's extremely valid. It's like there is energy in in an envi- in an, a literal environment that if you're back there, um, if you didn't like certain things about yourself, it's really easy to be not triggered in necessarily like an emotional way, but like quite literal physical triggers right. where it's like you're sensory. If you go back to your childhood bedroom, it's like, and like you're saying, if you go back to that environment and you didn't like who you were when you were in that environment, then you want to stay as far away from that Mm -hmm. environment as possible. And Mm -hmm. that's not necessarily like anyone's fault, Uh, not yours and not that it's just how it is. It's like, yeah, there's no one's perfect, but also there are some things that it's like, okay, let's take accountability. Let's work on this. Like, Mm -hmm. but also I do understand that it's like you, sometimes it's just staying away from that environment. It's just Mm -hmm. a better way to heal because you want time you want it's very important to have space it's very important to have time and I feel like that's been my like not vice but like my way of you know dealing with things is like okay I need space Mm -hmm. I need I don't want to be like reading stuff either way I just need space to clear my thoughts Mm -hmm. according to my human what's that called human design human design I got to be on top of a mountain I got to be basking in my own aura Mm. to just to figure out what to you figure out what do. who's who am I yeah and what do I like to do and what was you know what are things that I don't like who I used to be what mm-hmm. are things that I can see myself turning into that I don't like to be what do I mm-hmm. love like what is my inner child what the what did she love to do like what was her best you know memories from childhood what mm-hmm. what was she doing and trying to recreate that especially when you're a parent you're like mm-hmm. okay wow I feel all this pressure to you know bring the good things that I loved about my childhood and teach that to them without the baggage as well. Right. And that's really hard to do. Yeah. There's, so it's there's sticky. So much. And there's no, the thing is, is that I feel like the thing that hurts like most people is the judgment of not good enough. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Whether you say you're not Mormon, whether you say you're trying, whether you are like super active Mormon, if you don't feel good enough by the people around um, you. Yeah. The people around you don't think you're good enough. That's not a good feeling. No, it's never a good feeling and it's not motivating and it makes you want to run. It makes Mm -hmm. you want to get away from there so you can work on yourself because that's your first like fight or flight. And Mm -hmm. some people are fight or flight. Some people GTFO and some people stay and fight. Yeah. And I think both are hard. uh, Yeah. I think that the church doesn't make it easy to, I guess. It's easy to like physically walk away, but it's really, really hard to spiritually and emotionally and mentally leave. Yes, it is. It's really easy to not go to church. It's really easy. I mean, like easy as as in your physical body. Right. To not do certain things because that is a good Mormon is they're doing things. Like Mm -hmm. they're going to the temple. Mm -hmm. They're doing all these things. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to physically not, but it's not mentally easy. It's not emotionally easy to leave. No, and I think that, that's such a, I mean, I hear 24 seven from um, active Mormons or just the common, there's a common phrase that people use that I hear all the time when someone leaves the church and they talk about their experience and it's, oh, you can leave, everyone can leave the church, but they can't leave it alone. That's what people, they love to say that. That is like one of the most common things I hear is like, oh, yep, you're talking about the church again, even though you left, like, why are you still talking about it? And it's so, it lacks so much critical thinking, empathy, everything, because it is absolutely crazy to expect someone to devote their life for over 20 years 
in some cases, 50 years, you know, people don't leave until they're older, whatever. To devote so much time to something, to have something be the foundation of your entire life, your whole upbringing, what you think is the true thing in this world, then to just say, you should not talk about that ever again. You should walk away. Why are you still talking about it? Why do you care? Yeah. What you, do you, you see mean? me when I have a cold? What do you mean? And I had that for two days. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, yes, you want to talk about your experience of something that you, that meant so much to you that now you don't connect with. And I don't know. It's just like, that's such a crazy notion to me in general. And I think that that's another thing that people are just like, why do you have to talk about it? Like, why do you have to? And it's basically saying, since your view of religion doesn't line up with mine, you should be quiet. Yeah. That is literally what you are saying. When you say you should leave the church, but you should leave it alone. You should not Mm -hmm. talk about it. That is quite literally, that is the translation of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You don't think like me and I don't, your experience makes me feel uncomfortable. So you should be quiet. Don't talk about it. Yeah. But I can talk about mine. Mm -hmm. And it can make you uncomfortable. And it it can make you uncomfortable and it should because it's the truth. But if you walk away, you're not, why are you talking about it so Mm -hmm. much? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's because it's just triggering each other. Yeah. You're just triggering each other. And again, I feel like, I just want to say this. I feel like if you're, if you are listening to this, I don't know how many Mormon listeners we have and you're still in the church. Like, I don't think it's a you problem. Like it's a your heart problem. I feel like it's more so the, the principles you learn and how you learn them in, in different places. I don't know. I, I only have my experiences, mm-hmm. but I do feel like it's not, it's just so hard. The whole thing is so complicated, but I feel like it's, it's not like, I don't know. I just, because I know so many people who are Mormon, I just know that that doesn't come from a place of like where their heart truly no, lies. You know what not. I mean? Of course not. And I feel like it's easy when people are talking about their experience to feel like your it's your identity. So your whole mm-hmm. identity is being questioned, is being disrespected to your, in your opinion, mm-hmm. which is going to be so triggering. Mm-hmm. And that's because of what you have learned. Right. So it's really not surprising, honestly. No. Like what, even though it's not, fun it's not surprising unfortunately no you know what I mean Mm -hmm. no it's it's not surprising but that's something that I I hate that it's not surprising I know exactly and I hate that that's how I grew up you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like I just feel like I have still resentment like I think I get over it and I'm like oh I don't care and then I like some things bring me back and I'm just like no like that makes me so that really bothers me like Mm -hmm. why why am I not allowed to yeah it's so valid to share your experience yeah yeah it's like Taylor Swift and oh, you're upset because I'm talking about my life, my songs, my songs yes. in my house. Yeah. Okay, guys, this next brand, not only did they gift us with some of their amazing products, they also educated us on some of our hair needs, which is awesome. So as pioneers of alternative hair care, Alterna gets its name from being one of the first, if not the first, skincare inspired hair care brands on the market. Like your skin, repairing and caring for your hair is vital for it to be healthy. Why don't we all have 10-step hair care routines like we do with our skincare? Their products also contain an age control complex, which is based on the science of anti-aging skincare. So this is really cool. People normally only associate anti-aging with your body's physiological age, but hair aging is different. As soon as your hair grows from out of your head, it starts aging, and it's affected by the sun, heat tools, brushing, and all types of everyday factors. Alterna's age control complex is formulated with antioxidants to help undo the effects of intrinsic chemical and environmental aging and protect against future damage. As someone with really fine hair my whole life, I've been very careful of, you know, having too slicked back of a ponytail that's yanking on my hair or having it be in the sun for too long and get damaged. So this is so amazing because you really do need to take care of your hair. If I mean, for me, I feel like I have uh, just extra fine hair, but everybody, as you get older, you start to notice things change. And it's so nice that Alterna is not just a product or brand, but a lifestyle upgrade. The formulations are divine from the luxurious scents. The signature fragrance in their moisture collection is green tea and bergamot. And the product packaging, which is really nice um, to get a good lather in. They're also committed to a clean philosophy formulated without parabens, SLS, SLES, sulfates, and other harsh chemicals, which is in alignment with our personal philosophy. Caviar is not just in the name or tossed in for a fancy marketing. There is actual caviar extract in all the products, which is one of the richest sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Most of us take omega-3 vitamins, so we're familiar with their great benefits. Fatty acids are known to help replenish the hair's natural lipid layer for better moisture retention, smoothness, and shine. 
True luxury isn't a matter of what something costs, but the expectation that it delivers. We could go on and on about the many benefits of these products, helping with the overall vibrancy, elasticity, and manageability of your hair. But this is one of those areas where you must try it for yourself. Go learn more and pick up some product at your local Ulta or on Amazon.com. That's Alterna, spelled A-L-T-E-R-N-A. Alterna, the caviar of hair care. You guys, Origins sent us their new Youthtopia line, and it smells so good and is so just like hydrating and plumping. I really love Origins. I've loved them forever. So Origins, leader in plant-powered, high-performance skincare, introduces its latest innovation, Youthtopia. This groundbreaking collection taps into the universal symbol of health, the apple, to deliver transformative results that protect your skin's future. At the core of Youthtopia are two products, the Peptide Plumping Apple Cream and the Refining Apple Peel, bursting with activated stem cells and powerful peptides helping you hold on to the smooth, plump, and bouncy skin that you have for longer. Experience more radiant skin in just one week with the Refining Apple Peel, while the Peptide Plumping Apple Cream provides instant plumping effects and all-day antioxidant protection. So their antioxidant-rich apple peel ferment is made from 100% upcycled apple peels. It unlocks youth-preserving antioxidant benefits. So it's helping to neutralize environmental aggressors that can rush the aging process. This is something I've really been thinking about lately because I feel like I have mold in my house, but just the air that we breathe and everything like that, how much it affects not only, you know, how we feel inside, but our skin, our hair, things like that. So prepare your skin for the future with Youthtopia by Origins. Discover the transformative power of apples and skincare today. Available now at Origins.com and Ulta. Go check it out. Yeah, it's like we're all entitled to that. And I think you're exactly, I mean, nail on the head when you say it's just we're triggering each other because I think at this point, a lot of Mormons think like they're almost in the minority now. It's like, well, no, you guys are just like, there's a lot of ex-Mormon TikTok. They're feeling and a lot attacked. Of, yes, they're feeling attacked. They're feeling like, well, you guys are talking about it like 24 seven, so I'm gonna stand up. I get that. I get that. I think it's just, yeah, we have different belief systems. And when you have different belief systems, when you're operating from two completely different belief systems. Yeah. One person is operating under the, uh, under the premise that like, I am in the one and only true church and like, I do know what's best. Mm -hmm. And I, this is what's Works right. For me. And, and this is yeah. like, you know what I mean? And then you're operating from, you don't believe in that anymore. Yeah. Those are two completely different realities mm -hmm. to be living in. So it's very hard, I think, to see eye to eye on anything when it's like, you're literally operating under two completely different foundations, mm -hmm. you know? Definitely. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I have so many thoughts always about religion and stuff. And then I just, I never want to talk about them publicly, which I don't have to. Yeah. The, the, In I don't different need places. To. Yeah. It's like some but, places just aren't, you don't feel like, oh, I need to go on here. This podcast no, we we're talking about. No. You know, but I think there's, talk about something I think so complex. Yes. It's just like, there's a podcast that simply isn't long enough. Um, but I think that it's possible also, I wanted to say to, respect and love people who are in the church versus like respecting and loving the actual billion dollar institution that mm -hmm. is the church. Yeah. And to me, exactly. that those are very different things. Yeah. Like, and I think it's, it's easier and it feels like I've healed more when I focus on that versus if I do get, you know, if I focus on the corporation itself or, you know, the church as a whole, it's really, it's much easier to be in my present life is what I'm saying. Like, and, and take things in, you know, person to person, because I don't necessarily, you know, unless it's like you said, someone who's literally telling you to your face, they're disappointed, but yeah, you know, most of the time it's not coming up. You're, you're still, you know, having right. a connection, but then when you watch a show to bring it back, when you watch a show that's showing the whole thing mm -hmm. and it's not just people, it can be very triggering. And like I said, I think a lot of people, I know a couple people who are triggered by the men in the relation in the show, because it's like, I have also me. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I have, been in a relationship like that mm -hmm. and been you like that has been used against me as well and right. you know they're like jen a perfect in the show angel yeah. girl and does nothing wrong probably you know i don't know why i'm not gonna say why but you know whether it's of she just wants to do that or she's been you know like scared to not do that her whole marriage and then she has to do what just um i don't know if she's like following all the rules because she really wants right, to right. or if it's because you know, she is more devout, as you would say, uh -huh. than the other girls. Mm -hmm. They they talk about that in the show. Like, oh, you're always talking about like your garments and things like mm -hmm. that. And I, um, 
I think people see that relationship with her husband and how controlling and narcissistic he is. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of, especially if they grew up Mormon, a guy who uses Mm -hmm. those same, you know, those same tactics, those same tactics. And and you have this fear because it's your family. It's your eternal family. So then you're like, oh my God, you're, it's just so messy. Yes. And I think that can be extremely triggering as well. Like seeing the relationships and seeing the, yeah, just the things you've gone through to give context. And if you haven't seen the show, like, you know, all these, most of these women are married. There's one who's uh, d- divorced currently and single, but I think the rest are married, right? And, yeah. and you know, it's showing some of their relationships and some of them are a little bit toxic or certain things. And some of them seem pretty good and healthy. And probably the most toxic of them all is Jen and her husband mm-hmm. and specifically her husband. Yeah. And they are the most quote unquote Mormon. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's like, devout, yeah. they're the most devout and he's the scariest basically. Yeah. And that's not to say that all Mormon men are scary. I know a lot of great Mormon men, but it is like this interesting thing where it's like, okay, so, you know, he uses these tactics boundaries, and these boundaries yeah. of like, you need to be worthy, like to her, to control her completely. And when, it's really scary. And the how thing he does is, it. is, is not because he is so devout. It's because he, he's projecting because as we saw, it's like he's gambling until 2 a.m., which according to the Mormon church is not should good. should not be doing, yeah. So it's not like he is actually this holier saint. than thou. Yes, yeah, saint. And he's like, we need to be together on this. He's projecting on her and trying to control her and it has no base really mm-hmm. from the outside. You're just mm-hmm. like, what are you trying to control? She's doing not everything doing anything you're asking. Wrong. She basically went to a Chippendales show that she got like the oh, girls I got to talk surprised about this yeah. and it was like, oh, we're going to Chippendales, which is like male strippers. Yeah. And she literally, you could see the fear in her eyes where she's like, I can't go to this. Like, because like of I have to go husband. home. I feel sick. Like I cannot be here because she, her words, she's like, he will literally divorce me over something mm-hmm. like this, which is insane it was a surprise it was a surprise she She didn't didn't know know. she didn't know what they were doing they were already on the bus to go and they're like we're going to chippendales and she literally just got the sickest look on her face she's like i can't go i can't go and it just shows how terrified she is of him which is so scary yeah and men like this i have no problem dragging yeah publicly like he is scary so scary Mm mm-hmm he, she went to this show and he proceeded to say, I don't love you anymore. I'm going to divorce you. Yeah. Because Stop she- Stop talking about your heart. You don't have good intentions. All of these as things. As she's like sobbing, being like, I didn't know they were going to take me there. Like, I didn't want to come. I felt really uncomfortable. And he's like, well, he too bad. I don't her, love giving you. her the silent treatment. Like, it's so bad. It's psychotic. It's behavior. so scary. It's so bad. I feel like the whole Chip and Dale's thing I want to talk about because Nick and I were like having this discussion while we were watching it because- um, as they're like oiling up the guys. So they went like behind the stage too and they met them. And <laughs> Jen was just, sorry, it's not funny. Jen she was, was sick to her stomach. She was herself. Yeah, she was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like they're putting oil on them. And um, it was for, again, it was actually for Layla who is single. Is, is single, yeah. Yeah, and but the other girls were just having a fun time. It was like bachelorette vibes. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about it and Nick was like, what, there is a difference, but what is it? He's like, because if you found out, if someone wrote in and was like, my husband like went to a strip club and didn't tell me. And like, like got oiled up these yeah, girls and oiled be up like, these girls be like, excuse yeah. me? And he was like, what's the difference? Like if, if, you know, I did that, I feel like you would be upset. And I said, I absolutely would. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, here's the difference. First of all, Chippendales in a strip show is very different. Chippendales is like, I said to girls, this is funny. That's to, what I said to Lake. To I said boys, the exact same thing. It's, we're not thinking, I'm going to go have sex with that guy. Like, we're not feeling predatory. Like, predatory? We're not. We're just like, no. this is, the girls were dying. And Nick yes. was kind of seeing, like, as it was going on, how the girls were dying laughing. Yes. Guys are literally like, they're watching strip show. They're like, throwing money. It's a different It's a different thing. vibe. That's and exactly that's why it's different when, when guys talk about girls and when girls talk about guys. Because it's like, there is, okay, obviously you should always be respectful, but I'm just saying in those situations, there is a, there's a tangible difference and yes, that's what it is. It's it because is. Girls think it's funny. Girls are not feeling like, I'm going to go cheat on my husband. No, like, unless they have like the worst relationship yeah. ever and they, but even still, yeah. I feel like at a little- I said, str- you should be more concerned if they go to a book reading and the guy that's reading to it is super like, like <laughs> emotional. Like that's yeah. what girls are like right. really turned on by. So, and like Demi was, first of all, Demi, if you're watching this, we love you, Queen. We love you, Queen. I could not take my eyes off you. You're beautiful, hilarious. Stunning. You were killing it. You are a star. And she was killing me when she came back. She's like, 
he put his hands on my, or I put his hands on his bare butt cheek. Like she's cracking up. Yeah. And it's that's a the funny difference. thing. Yeah. I was saying the same thing to life. I literally said that word for it. I yeah. said the difference is girls think it's funny and mm-hmm. guys think it's like sexy. Yeah. When they're at, well, I'm assuming like, yeah, because, it's like a visual thing. Yes. But also, um, when a guy puts a top hat over his dangling, it's funny. Yeah. It's not like, <laughs> oh, I got to leave the room. Like it is funny. Yes. Yes. I also feel like just in general with the stats of like, it's just what we were talking about earlier, how you were like, oh, he asked me if I carried a gun and it's terrifying. Yeah. I, it just in general, it is more likely, like men do scary things more than women do. Yeah. It's just a, a fact. Mm-hmm. It's just literally statistics. So I think that, I don't know, like men cheat more often, men, you know. Yeah just do a lot of scary things. They like, have more testosterone. Yes. It's, yeah. I mean, this is like going a whole different direction, but like serial killers, 99% men. Yeah. Like a lot of just scary things in this world. It's primarily men who do those acts. And so I think it just feels so different when it's like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, not like to compare serial killers show. to Chippendales, but do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just feels more it's like different. guys sometimes have worse intentions, mm-hmm. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. And even as you're watching the show, like I was not feeling uncomfortable. Nick and I were dying laughing yes. like, when they were just doing funny stuff. And versus like sometimes if you watch a guy at a strip show, you, you feel uncomfortable them watching the girl because there's just a, I don't know. A difference. Yeah. There's just a difference. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, her husband is trash. I have no yeah. problem He's saying so that. He's so narcissistic. He is so she, scary. I hope so bad. So this is something that, I can't remember who said it, but I heard about it. Um, I heard someone talking about how the housewife, this is not the housewives franchise, but it's similar Mm -hmm. um, because it's wives and it's all based on a group of women Mm -hmm. and how the housewives franchise is always, you know, this is trashy. This is stupid. These girls are crazy. Making fun of them constantly. But it shows it's actually, it was a historic shift in culture because it shows women and their problems and what they go through in their life. They're like serious, um, tragedies they go through serious uh scandals affairs like there's so many different things that women went through or had have been going through for forever but it was never shown in a way like this Mm -hmm. and it opens the doors for women on these shows if they are in an abusive relationship or they are in a bad situation it's projected to people and they're seeing it from a that's a such a unique experience to be able to see it played back and to see so many people's reactions to how you know and, and it probably it makes you realize, like, if you are in a relationship like that and then it gets projected to the world and people see it and everyone's yeah. consensus is, like, your Trash. husband is scary yeah. and you should leave him. Like, that's very weird behavior. You're probably like, oh, yeah. if literally everyone thinks that, then obviously we have mm-hmm. an issue here. I think with him specifically, you can say, like, oh, reality TV is kind of scripted. It's kind of produced. But that type of behavior, you can't hide. Like, it's, no. it's like... They who's couldn't gonna have sign up to be that. that? Yeah. And also who's going to sign up to be that? Like, no. Oh yeah, I'll do this. They sign up. They're like, oh, they're going to show us. Yeah. You can't fake that. No, you can't hide from like that really weird commentary and yeah. stuff. And why he was probably texting her and not calling her because he didn't want his voice. And maybe he didn't think she was going to be reading her texts. Like, right, reading you know, text. he's fighting silently and like, oh, we're not, I'm not going to talk to you. All these things. And honestly, yeah. at the end, that was really bad, but was almost worse in a way is how absolutely zero care for her and her interests and her life and and honestly their livelihood when at the end they were talking about and again that can be edited but at the end when she's talking about you know if if he's moving to New York if they're going to move to New York together and Mm -hmm. she's like what about mom talk like what if I want I have really great opportunities here and he said I don't really care no validation no listening shut down immediately Basically, like, I am the leader of this family. Right. Do not speak to me. And yeah. it's me. He me, doesn't. Me. He doesn't like men like that don't like you to be around women who empower you. Yes. And he who, wants to get her away from yes, her friends he, because he knows that they're stronger together. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. wants to isolate her so that she doesn't have anyone to talk to. And that's what men like this do. And it, that's the scariest part is that. Yeah, they know those girls. And that was a healing conversation is when she was like kind of crying and they were all just like, yes, he is trash. Like yeah. you did nothing wrong. Yeah. I was like, that is so healing to watch girls just come yes. together and be like, you didn't do anything wrong. This is crazy. Especially from 
girls who have been through the exact same mm-hmm. thing. Like Jesse was like, this is, I've been through yes. this. You've got to get out. And they were like, he will not change. Yeah. Like there were so many instances where she, yeah, he would just shut her down. And this is another thing. Like, again, there are so, there's so many great Mormon men, but I do, I do think that, um, it, the narrative of, because I've seen a lot of people on the show, they talk about how, you know, oh, we were kind of taught to be like these housewives and kind of like, um, Follow what the man Yeah, wants. follow, yeah. like, the man is the leader. And then I've seen a lot of, uh, not backlash, but people, Mormons are people being like, that's not true. Like, you're not taught that. And I'm like, now, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gaslighting the whole yeah. existence of the church because yeah. that is absolutely what you're taught. Mm-hmm. At least yeah. it was, maybe it's changing now. Past 20 years, yeah. that is w- absolutely what you're being taught. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that the man is the leader of the house. Because you listen they to have him, the priesthood. They have the priesthood. Yeah. You need to do like, they're the leader. That's mm-hmm. that's what you're taught. And also, if, again, it's just a fact, like, you know, at general conference or whatever, like all the leaders of the church are men. Yeah. They are the only ones who have any power in the church. Any priesthood power. Any yeah. priesthood power, but any just but power in general. Yeah, yeah. They I'm are just saying the top they, of the food chain. It's like that the priesthood is like the magic piece. Right. That makes it that that's like the reason. You know what I mean? It's like right, that's right. the reason that. Yeah. But they're they the only use, uh, yeah. as a woman, you have no authority to make any changes. Like you you could try and make a small change, but you'd have to ask a man yeah. to do it. And what going back to the show, I feel like one thing that they were talking about, and again, I feel like most women in the church get fed up before men because they're like, okay, what's happening here? Like I'm feeling very undermined. I'm feeling, you know, but Mm -hmm. if you're the one who's being lifted up, it's not as easy to see what's going on because you're just like, oh, this is great. Awesome. If you're a man, you're saying. If you're a man. Of course. And so I feel like, again, PR, if you're listening for (laughs) LDS church, like- I'm sure they're I'm sure they're Remember they posted that thing about like women, like, oh, this church has more- um, gives more gives more power to women than like any other religion. Yes, does. Yeah. yeah. And every woman alike, Mormon, ex Mormon, they all come and they're like, Mormon. love this church, but no, not true. Other people are like, I've lived this my whole life. I'm not Mormon anymore because of this. Like, yeah, there's so it's not true. That's just and not that's what true. these yeah, and that's what these girls are saying. Like, that's what they're trying to take back. That's what they're trying exactly. to stand in. And so, well, also it's it's. <sighs> We're having a societal shift now where a lot of women, and this is like what's so fascinating on the show is that, you know, we've been taught, we've been taught our whole lives that it's like, you know, the man is the leader. He's the provider. You're the like, you're, you're, you're yeah. a homemaker. Like maybe if you work, but you, your role is to like be a mom and a wife. Like that's your most important role on this earth. That's what I've been taught my whole life. That I'll speak for myself. That's what I gathered from growing up in the church. And what's interesting now is we're seeing this shift where, and even on the show where they were saying like pretty much all of them are the breadwinners mm-hmm. in their house. That changes things. It does. It changes it the power changes dynamic. It changes the dynamic yeah. because now, well, If Jen wanted to leave Zach, she has her own way of making money and it, that yes. scares him. He yes. said, I don't want you to have money. I don't want you to have your own money because no. I want to be the one who's making money so that I can, that's what a narcissist thinks. Right. Versus, you know, if you're a normal balanced man and right. you're not toxic, you're like, this is great. Yeah. We got two or we got one, you know, two incomes. I'm happy or or they just support you, which is awesome if they're not threatened by you, Mm -hmm. which is great. But sometimes I think growing up in that environment, that would be hard for a guy too. Mm -hmm. That's hard for a guy to like step down and be like, oh, I'm not the leader. Yeah. 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 Then they feel like they're not a good Mormon guy and they're not the leader of their house. They're not doing good enough. So it's this weird shift in dynamics where it's like. It gives the power more to the females because they're like, oh, actually, I don't have to be scared of you really yeah, yeah. I, I love to see I love to see this because I think and sorry really quick what I was saying about the PR of it is that oh, yeah, they yeah. say that they're Mormon and again I'm like they say but they're not no I'm kidding <laughs> the, the, girl, the, the girls, girls the show? Yeah. yeah they are they are in the church and they mm-hmm. say I'm Mormon and some of them are more active than others mm-hmm. but the thing is is that they're trying they're not from the outside being like this is so bad you know they're in there they want right. it to be different so take that and Use it. Right. PR. Like they're still pay- they're still probably paying you. Yeah, tithing. and listen. So. Like listen to them. Listen to the people. Like what they, what everyone's feeling. Yeah. Especially the women. Yeah. I think that this is a very relatable show for a lot of people. I think yeah, a I lot of people thing. are trying to like again as society progresses. I think it gets increasingly more hard to be a very devout Mormon. It just is. Well, like, I think too. 
I wonder, I mean, I'm, I don't have this experience, but I also want, I feel like the, pro, the niche problems of like the baby blessing are very, you know, um, niche to Mormonism, but I feel like the gossip of it, the like judgmental of it, mm-hmm. a lot of people can probably relate if they come from a small religious town, regardless mm-hmm. if it's like, especially if it's like a Christian town, it's yeah. like similar vibes. So uh-huh. I think maybe pe- other people can also relate to the vibe again. The thing that's interesting is like the Mormonism of it, like right. the Mormon lore that people don't maybe don't know, like the baby blessing. Yeah, certain yeah. Things. There was a baby blessing and like some of the girls weren't invited to it because they yeah. essentially like weren't Mormon enough. That was the real reason. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, we just don't know you as well. But it was really like, well, you kind of don't follow the rules. So like, I don't really want you. It's like a very yeah. sacred day, which fair, which again, I guess. I, that's their She possess- had invite again, going back to Zach, like, she had invited them already. She was, I don't think she was really even thinking that because these are her friends. She right, loves them. Right. Like, she seemed so sweet and like mm-hmm. honestly non judgmental mm-hmm. of them. And they were like, she was like, oh, yeah, you guys come to the baby blessing. And then she talks to her husband and he's like, you can't bring these, this, this, this person, probably the most outspoken girls mm-hmm. who are going to tell her, you know, he's not a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He doesn't want to be around them. Yeah. Which, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's just so much, the so show, much more. Like, it's a great show. It's a great show. It D- is. Besides the religion of it all and all that. It's just good reality TV. It's a TV. great reality TV show. Mm-hmm. There's some serious stars. There's such good potential for storylines. For sure. And the girls are phenomenal. Yeah. So keep going, girls. Yeah. Don't give up. Um, You're doing great. We support you. We support you. We love you. Yeah. And I think after um, watching the show, I've known like a couple of Mormons that I know who watched the show and maybe had different a different idea before it came mm. out and we're like, wait, what is this? After they actually watched the show, there was no need to be scared. There was no need to be scared right. for them. Like of, oh, you know, it's polygamy or it's like representing, you know, some, well, because some the, people. The, not swinger, everyone, the swinger scandal of it all really is not a part, much no, part of the it's show. It's not saying, you know, I think maybe some people were like, oh, it's going to, all these girls are swinging. It's going to be like, this is what Mormons do. We all swing, right. we all do this. And it really wasn't It wasn't that. like that at all. It was like real life issues. Yeah. It was. It was mentioned here or there that one of the girls had done, you know, had done swinging. That was. But she never even was like, this is, this is like a Mormon thing to do. No. Like, that's what we wanted. Like, I think if you have been thinking about it, you're scared. Don't be scared. Yeah. To watch it. Yeah. To watch it. Yeah. I really am just obsessed with this, like, illumination of this culture because yes. I really think that it's very it's- very so like interesting to people who aren't a part of it. Again, it's so normal. The to soda us. shop of it all. The soda shop, the swinging thing. Like even the mention of it. I mm-hmm. know they don't. They're not all doing that. But, but it's I'm like, just saying, like even the yeah. fact that that exists within the world because of all the reasons that they talk about how they just get yes. married super young and all of mm-hmm. that. It's like it's so intriguing. And yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It's very interesting. Yeah, it is. That's why it's so relatable to us. It's like I heard. The things they're talking about in the show, I've heard people in my totally. hometown do. Like, I've heard of things like that. Like, it's so relatable. It's mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, yep. That's so real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. To see it on such a large scale, I think mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Loved it. Super interesting. So Ho- good. Hopefully, I'm sure they're going to have season two, right? Like, they have to. It went so well. Oh, they have Why to. Why on earth wouldn't they? Like, yeah, they have I'm to. so curious to see what's going to happen with the girls. Who's going to be there next time? Jen, please, please come back. Don't move to New York. I think they already moved to New well, York. Well, come back. Come back. Come back We're and ready. film the next season. We're ready. I know. She's a I mean, the show just came out. So it's like things have things can change. For sure. You know? They, they haven't Ever even since seen it came that. out. Yeah, exactly. True. It's like in the last week, it, things could have really changed. Yeah. That is really hard that she like has kids with him though. So hard. I know. It's you not know? that easy. It I know be, it's not yeah, that easy. It would be it's different. It's really sad. She didn't maybe, but mm-hmm. that's really, really hard. Um, well, well, shoot. Well, shoot. Well, shoot. We talked about this the whole time. Um, and I could keep talking, but I know we'll leave it at so that. many things. I feel like we didn't even touch on in the I show. Know. I know so, so many things. Yeah. You guys need to all watch it. Maybe we can, well, talk about it more later. I was going to yeah. say, but we really, we've been the whole thing and yeah. I kind of, but yeah, it was so good. I wonder when the season, the next season would be if they I were know. I wonder it. if they're already filming. Hmm. Or a reunion would be great too. A reunion would be good. I know it was number one on Hulu. Like I wonder how many Mm -hmm. people tuned in. Crazy. (sighs) Crazy. Um, We'll definitely go watch it if you guys are interested. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. We really appreciate all the support. Everyone congratulate Chelsea on her new car. She deserves it. If you see me driving by, you'll know. (laughs) Trust me, you will feel her presence. You'll feel my aura. (laughs) 
my aura points from 10 miles away. <laughs> Um, follow us on Instagram. It's at what we said podcast. You can watch us on YouTube. What we said podcast. We love you guys so much. And that's, that's what, what we, we said. said. Bye. Bye.